Firstly, make a selection of the screen. I use the pen tool for this, but you can use whatever method you feel comfortable with. We're just trying to capture the actual glass area. If you do use the pen tool, just make sure that the mode is set to path and not shape. This catches me out quite a few times as it seems to default to shape, which is annoying. I've sped this section up a little bit just so you don't get bored, but it's a very simple path. Just try not to get the black bits of the border in. We just want the sort of the gray colored glass. I'm just going to name my path to screen so it's saved for future use because if it stays as a work path, it can easily get deleted. Now, make a duplicate of the background layer. You can drag it to the icon down there or you can press Command or Control D. And I'm just going to name it to screen. Now, we need to turn this into a selection and then create a layer mask on the top layer just by clicking on that layer mask button. Now hold the Alt key and drag down onto the background layer to duplicate the mask. And now we're going to press Ctrl or Command and I to invert the mask on the background layer. So now you can see we've got just the screen on the top layer and everything but the screen on the lower layer. Double click on the layer mask to bring up the layer mask properties and change the mask feather to around one pixel on both. This just helps to stop any hard edges that might make things look a bit awkward. Now for the fun part, drag any image you like from your desktop into the photo P window and it will just be added to the um, layer stack. Now right click and choose distort, then drag the four corners of the image to roughly line up with the screen area. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's quite important to make sure that the image you've brought in is roughly the same shape as the TV glass. Otherwise, the end result might look a bit stretched. Now, once you've got that in place, right click and choose warp. Using the four squares in the middle, if you can see them here, just give the image a little bit of a bend as I'm doing, and we're just trying to emulate the curve of the screen. This step isn't critical, so if you don't feel comfortable doing this or you just want a simpler workflow, just leave it out. Now, drag the image to the bottom of the layer stack and make the screen layer visible, so it's now covered up. Change the blending mode to hard light to make sure that the image is visible underneath, but it retains all of the reflections and detail of the glass, like that. This way we get a very realistic look of the glossy screen on top of the image, and this really sells the effect of it being played on the TV. We need to soften the image a little bit. We'll use Gaussian blur, as on an old TV like this, the picture definitely wouldn't be as sharp as it was on the original image. I played around, but found two pixels was good for this, but it's to taste. We just want to soften it a little. And you can lower the opacity of the screen layer if the overall effect is too strong and it will just knock back the highlights a little bit. And of course, the link to both of the images used in this tutorial are in the description box below.